everybody. Thank you for joining us this uh, 20th day of August, uh, to, excuse me, 18th day of August, 2020. Uh, uh, now approximately 1.50 uh, p.m. Welcome back. Uh, this is our first conference meeting since we had our break uh, back in July. I wanna thank everybody for their patience in allowing the commission to have its break and to uh, uh, resuscitate over the summer months, but here we are back again, a lot of new challenges, uh, new opportunities, and uh, and hopefully we have a good number of answers as going forward, not only this meeting and tonight's meeting, but uh, in future meetings as we try to tackle the issues of our community. So um, uh, as with um, all conference meetings, there is a certain is there something that's, is there something? No, we're okay. Okay. Um, I thought we were having technical difficulties, but I guess we're not. Uh, so as with all conference meetings, uh, there's a certain format that we follow. And uh, today I would like to uh, uh, talk a little bit about that format, um, but I must begin the meeting with a uh, announcement that is required of me. And uh, it goes as follows. The city of Fort Lauderdale will be hosting its meetings in a virtual format until further notice public can listen to and view virtual meetings at fortlauderdale.gov forward slash FLTV and on YouTube. That's youtube.com uh, forward slash city of Fort Lauderdale, all spelled out, as well as on Comcast channel 78 and AT&T UVerse channel 99. For those who want to speak on the agenda item and have not already signed up to do so, please visit www.fortlauderdale, spelled out, fortlauderdale.gov forward slash B as in Victor C meetings to sign up. Now, to help ensure the same decorum as our in-person meetings, we ask that you please abide by the following guidelines. Number one, please refrain from any behavior that is disruptive, distractive, profane, or inhibits the meeting in any way. Two, while you're on the phone, are waiting for your opportunity to speak, please mute meeting broadcast on FLTV, YouTube podcast, AT&T, whatever one you're watching on, if you're watching simultaneously to avoid delays with the broadcast. I will call upon you when it is your turn to speak and also notify you when your time has expired. City staff is automatically added speakers. Um, it's also added speakers into listen-only mode and you will be unmuted to speak when you recognize. Three, you, once you have completed speaking, you will be muted and you may either hang up to exit the meeting or stay connected and listen to the rest of the meeting. So moving forward, uh, uh, why don't we begin with city commission reports? Uh, so Commissioner Moritis, do you have any reports you'd like to make today? Commissioner Moritis, are you there? I'm there. Is she there? Yeah, she's trying to unmute. She's shaking her head up there. Okay, so hold on. I have a phone, but I'm going to have to. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Do you, have, do you hear echo? No. You don't hear an echo. Okay, I'm not sure if it's on my phone or computer, but I'll talk. Uh, okay, thank you. It's good to be back and see you all. Um, I know we're talking shirts today, but I did have to wear my inner Miami jersey because they're playing on Saturday, and I never got the chance to wear my jersey. <laughs> we set the city down the day before they played, but uh, hopefully you all will watch it on TV this Saturday. I did wear my census t-shirt yesterday at City Hall, though, and I will be tweeting that picture and encouraging everyone to fill out the census, which I have already done for my family, too. Um, also today, another big day. I hope you all voted. I voted on my way in. And uh, in addition to voting today, it's the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment. So I'm thankful for the women's suffrage movement and, um, and just being a woman and voting today was a great experience. Not only voting, but voting for other females who are running for elected office. So I'm thankful, thankful for that. I did attend the Florida League of Cities Conference last week um as your delegate and i voted on behalf of the mayor 
and um, we are moving legislation forward. They're actually um, hoping, obviously, the federal government will give cities funding directly for the CARES Act, and um, I'm not so sure that will pass, but they are lobbying for that effort. Um, and I'm sure maybe Chris will give us an update later about the CARES funding and, and the reimbursements we are getting, even though they are pass-throughs. Uh, I was uh, recognized um, as a home rule hero with other elected officials from around the state. So um, basically for lobbying against the vacation rental industry and any preemption from the state. So uh, let's see, am I any voting? Uh, Schools reopening, so I have had uh, a private school in my district reopen. I'm in communication with them in case they need any support or anything happens. Uh, I have a few more private schools opening up in my district also this week. So keeping, um, trying to keep in touch with them just to, just to see how it goes as they navigate all these new territories. And I think that's it from District 1. So let me ask you, um what, do you know what kind of uh, protocol they're following in the schools to allowing the kids to go back? Are, are they doing a hybrid thing where some kids can uh, learn from home, or is it everyone has to come into the school? Yeah. So it's different mayor based on the school. Some schools are smaller, um, and they don't have to. Every school that I've talked to is keeping the six feet distancing between desk and everything, um, you know, mask on while you're walking, if you can't social distance, um, the temperature check, staying home if you feel ill, you know, all those general, they're working closely with the health department. So when I did talk to the school that opened last week, you know, I asked about it and the headmaster assured me um, they have a communication on a regular basis with the, with the Broward County uh, Health Department. So. They're following, they're, they're allowed to open. You know, I know the county uh, did not prohibit them from reopening, so they, they are moving forward. Some schools are having two days on, two days at home. Some, uh, one of the schools is staggering the reopening, meaning that um, maybe the, the younger kids will start and then the middle school will start and the high school will start. So they're, they're actually, they are all doing something a little different. Uh, the schools I talked to also are giving families the option of just remote learning from home if that's what they feel most comfortable with as a family. The school that opened last week had 90% of the students return for in-school full-time and, and not to virtual. So the parents uh, wanted that. So we'll, uh, I'll keep you updated. All right. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Let me see. Am I unmuted? Yes, I am. And... Uh, I am also wearing my shirt, but I got the memo at the city auditor did for our census to wear the census shirt today. He's so counting. He's counting. You count. You count. Everyone counts. Fill out that census. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to thank all of the neighborhood associations in District 2. They really kept going throughout the summer, uh, and I had the pleasure to join them, uh, everything by Zoom, but... Um, July 8th, South Middle River, July 9th, Central Beach Alliance. Uh, I attended the uh, Swimming Hall of Fame board meeting on the 14th of July. Uh, 16th of July, the Sailboat Bend Civic Association met. I also uh, had an excellent Zoom meeting with the Neighborhood President's Roundtable, the presidents of all of District 2 neighborhoods on the 16th. Um, and uh, on the 29th, Flagler Village Civic Association had their meeting. Uh, very much centered about the one-stop shop uh, site. Um, Tuesday, August 4th, uh, I attended a very interesting uh, presentation by the ULI, uh, Southeast Florida Caribbean webinar with Richard Florida about cities and COVID recovery. Um, very, very interesting topic. Uh, Thursday, August 6th, Central Beach Alliance um, again met. Uh, Tuesday, August 11th, uh, I had the pleasure of joining Jeff Maggio and John Luce III on that uh, waterway boat tour throughout our waterways and uh, they imparted quite a, a bit of education and I, An I eye opening that. experience wasn't it vice mayor yes yes uh, I, I sent a few photos around but uh, I'm, I'm glad we did what we did today and we do have a lot more work to do with regards to cleaning our waterways so uh, yes that was a great a, a great tour um, attended the bonnet house long-range planning committee on August 13th 
Um, and on the 19th, Flagler Village Civic Association uh, meets and also points at a heights. Uh, I will be attending a Bonnet House Board of Directors meeting on the 20th. Uh, Commissioner Sarnes and I have our Los Solos Mobility Working Group meeting with Corradino uh, at 2.30. Uh, they're making a lot of progress and really doing a good job sticking to the timeline. So we should have a great report and a final plan for the commission in December, just like we originally intended. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. A couple of comments, uh, Chris, I'm hoping that we can do a little of education. We're getting a lot of calls and emails um, about the trim notice that went out from the property appraiser because people are seeing for the first time the stormwater fee based on acreage. There's a line item on acreage and then there's a line item for um, trips. Uh, we need to maybe do something with that and especially with the condos because roughly the average condo person is seeing about a $60 charge for stormwater on their trim notice. They've never seen that and that also affects the way condos budget and condos are budgeting right now for uh, that they're all entering into their budget season. So are we planning on doing anything in terms of education for that, for the citizens, and then also the condo associations? We are, um, and I think I, I'm gonna pull it up here. I think I sent it to you by email yesterday. Um, give me just one second. I can give you more specifics. Um, yeah, those two line items represent the way that the blended rate is, uh, is made of the trips as well as the impervious surface. And uh, so we're gonna do some virtual public meetings. Um, and uh, we've got a series of five of those scheduled between August the 20th and September 8th to give an overview of the new rate structure. Um, we've got some uh, interactive GIS information on our website uh, to explain how that rate is, uh, is created and uh, uh, we've included an insert with the trim notice um, to allow uh, people to know about these virtual meetings as well as the August utility bill. So more information on that coming out, but uh, those begin in two days and there's five of them, five uh, virtual public meetings scheduled between August the 20th and September the 8th. Okay, thank you. And we have promoted that in our district emails, but I'm just thinking that maybe a little bit Besides just telling people we're going to have these workshops, maybe we need to just have something very succinctly stating how this is a change and maybe just even a notice if we have a list of all of the you know multifamily dwellings in the city, letting them know that while they're doing their budgets now, they need to consider the fact that um, their residents will actually be billed for that portion. So that could be, you know, a, a, a amount of money that they might want to know about in terms of their budget. So, you know, thank you for that. Um, I did receive some excellent news last night, uh, hallelujah, but it looks like we do have a boat show agreement uh, with Suntex and the Las Olas Marina and the boat show. I'm hoping that Chris will be able to confirm that, but I have heard that all the parties uh, involved have signed off on that. Um, Mayor, I know that you're involved with phone calls with the county and, and Chris, you're involved with managers calls, but I'm getting a lot of comments from restaurants that are saying that the 10 o'clock uh, well, the 11, yeah, the 11 o'clock is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the 10 o'clock is really very, very difficult for them. They're not able to get that second turnover of tables um, and uh, they're getting cited. Some of them are even thinking, why are they being cited and fined when people on the beach or other people that they see are not getting cited or fined? They're feeling kind of upset about it. Um, I'm also hearing from some of the hotels on the Barrier Island that would love to be able to book a wedding if they could, you know, and they can do it socially distanced and they know how to seat people at a table if they're from the same family or whatever. But I'm just hearing a lot about that. I don't know if you've had those kinds of conversations with the county about maybe giving restaurants another hour or two, uh, but I did want to mention that I'm hearing that a lot uh, from my district. So let me respond um, to that. Let me respond thank to that. You. So um, at the last uh, mayor's call, what is, what is a mayor's call? So a mayor's call is where uh, county mayor and the county administrator have a conference call with uh, all 31 mayors of the county, in which um, uh, the basic format is the first 20 to 30 minutes. We listen to the healthcare professionals. They give us the latest statistics on, uh, on the COVID-19 virus, uh, their uh, contact tracing results, uh, the infection rates, and so forth. And then from there, all the mayors are asked to give their opinions 
regarding um, best practices and ideas going forward. Um, the issue of restaurants being open another hour, so allows them to close by 10, by 11 o'clock, has been raised repeatedly by many, many, um, many, many mayors, and uh, myself included. I have, I have contacted uh, the, the um, mayor Holness multiple times privately. Uh, I've spoken with uh, uh, Bertha Henry on this. Uh, I, I, I just do not believe that there is any significant impact to the rate of infection should we keep it open one more hour, as long as we maintain our social distancing and our other uh, protocols that are, that are advised by the CDC. Um, uh, Mayor Holness has indicated that they're considering it, but anybody who's in the business who's, who's impacted by this, I recommend that they contact Mayor Holness's office directly or uh, or the county administrator, Bertha Henry's office directly and make their opinions known uh, because I have been uh, aggressively trying to push that open one more hour because I think it significantly impacts the ability of our community to continue to function uh, with any kind of sustainable economic uh, dynamic. So, you know, we are a tourist destination um, and, uh, uh, and, you know, we have, we, we have to do what we can to fight this disease, fight the spread of the disease. But we also have to understand that we have another kind of health matter to deal with, and that's the health of our economy. And so I do believe that there's a balance we could strike and still maintain uh, the, the uh, health and safety standards to, uh, designed by the CDC. And um, so in response to your point, we are working, we as a city and me personally, working aggressively to try to not just keep restaurants open, but, but other businesses too, trying to figure out ways to reopen businesses so that we can continue uh, the vitality of our community. Thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate that. And I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, just wanted to make sure everyone knew that I am hearing a lot of this um, in District 2. Uh, and also, hopefully, you will all have those discussions about small events or even weddings and, and ways to you know have these hotels perhaps present a plan where they can do this within CDC guidelines and social distance and, you know, no dancing, things like that, but just at least they'll have some sort of a ceremony or an event or just something to help people and also to help the businesses. Cause I know that they're trying very hard for that. So, you know, thank you for that. Um, I'd like to hear hopefully from Raj, if he's still around, I don't know if he is, but I've also been getting a lot of complaints about people um, saying that, you know, the odors around Las Olas Boulevard and Sunrise Boulevard, Central Beach. And I know that we have pump stations in these areas, um, but I, leave, I believe that hopefully we are beginning a little bit more of an investigatory period and a cleaning of these areas. Uh, if Raj is still here, if he can address that, but I'm, I'm seeing more comments about that and not just to us directly, but also on next door as well. Uh, is Raj here that he yes, can maybe sir. talk about? Thanks, yes, Raj. Yes, sir. Uh uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, what I have done is that based on your last email, uh, I have asked our assistant director. I have asked our assistant director to take the lead and investigate all these areas. Now there are certain sections where the pitch or the slope of the existing uh, gravity lines they are not what they should be, and most of them they were built before. So what I have asked them to do is that typically they do like a quarterly cleanup. So I've asked them to beef up or the number of uh, cleanup that they do like every two months and see what the progress is. If not, then we are going to do that as well uh, for, for once every month. So that is, that is towards the cleaning of the existing system, the gravity system. And then we are going to investigate uh, the, the order issue and many of many times the order issue they probably come, uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, from uh, you know the pipes not being completely tight, and there could be so we need to do some smoke testing. So all those things are in process. They do take a little time, but uh, thank you for making us aware, and we are taking proactive action. Okay, thank you, Viraj. I I really appreciate that, and we'll get that word out also to folks when they ask us. Thank so you. So that's much appreciated. Thank, thank you. you. Um, 
Chris, maybe I, I get a lot of questions, especially from the Flagler Village area. If you could just let us know what the next steps are, where we are in the process of the uh, unsolicited proposal that we received for the one-stop shop site. Um, I can tell you that it is still being reviewed and that uh, when it's discussed next, it will be continue to be discussed confidentially with the commission until such time as there's direction to either bring it forward or not. Okay. Um, because I think at our last meeting, right, on July 7th, we did, we did accept it for the city to start vetting it, correctly? We, we, it, you asked that we look at it over the summer, and which we have done. Um, the city attorney uh, and I uh, jointly have asked for additional information, which the statute allows, and are in the process of making a determination whether or not it meets the criteria in the statute as a, a qualifying project with a public purpose. There's no, excuse me, uh, there's no formal acceptance to be, that it actually occurs. We're, we're provided one and it's received. And then we look at it and, and the commission obviously gave us direction as the city manager said to, to, to look into it, but there's no formal acceptance that triggers any sort of timeline. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Alan. Um, appreciate it. Uh, lastly, um, I know that uh, maybe it was last year, we had a, a team of folks from FPL come and speak to us at a conference meeting. Uh, I think we've also had folks from Verizon. Um, I know that I requested from them and, and they said that they would. Just giving a courtesy, a heads up to neighborhoods when they're doing major projects so people aren't all of a sudden waking up one day and saying, why is my driveway blocked? What's going on on my street? Why is my street blocked? What's all this, no what's all this work? And they said they would, but it's not happening. And I'll give you an example right now, major projects going on in the Dolphin Isles neighborhood of District 2. Um, no one has a clue. No one gets a word. Managers of buildings aren't informed. Residents aren't informed. Neighborhood association isn't informed. And yet the work is extensive, big projects. Is there anything we can do? And I know that the utilities have this autonomy, but is there any way that we can let them know how to be a good neighbor and communicate uh, with residents when major projects are going to be undertaken. Is there any plan for that? Or what do you think, Chris? Well, I'm probably going to sound like a broken record here, but, uh, you know, this has been something that we've struggled with for some time um, and getting them to actually do it. You know, the response is always, yeah, no, no problem. Or conversely, it's a, uh, you're not impacted by the project, so you weren't on the right list. Um, we'll, we'll go back and, and talk to them again and see if there's anything they might suggest that we do differently to actually once and for all get, get the word out. But uh, you were correct when you use the term that they have some significant autonomy in uh, making sure their utility is available to their customers. So um, at the end of the day, they don't have to come tell us a lot of what they're doing before they start doing it. And I just find it, it's insensitive, but it's also kind of arrogant. I mean, yes, you don't have to, but it certainly would be the the neighborly thing to do. But so whatever you can have accomplished in conversations with these folks, that, that would be greatly appreciated. Um, any discussion of micro mobility going forward, even if it's on a limited basis, I'm hearing from people that would like to see a return, uh, especially maybe in the downtown area uh, of some of our um, scooters, some of our programs scooters. that we initiated scooters. in terms of scooters, yes. And so I'll take the first part of the question, or the first part of the response, rather, and then I'll let the city attorney take the second part. Um, we've had one company approach us uh, with the concept of having lease scooters. And what I mean by that is you would come and actually lease, you know, much like you would lease a car or a bicycle, probably more a bicycle, um, a scooter, and it would be yours and yours only for a period of two weeks or a month. Um, you know, and I think we're going to start to see those scooters come back to the to the streets uh, sooner rather than later um, as that gets as that gets marketed in Fort Lauderdale. Um, with respect to the three permits that our ordinance allows to issue, um, I don't know that we have those moving forward anytime soon and uh, that we may have to do it to, or perfect our process there. So let me turn it over to this uh, city attorney, let him explain why. Thank you. Okay. With regards to the permits, to the extent that we have not moved forward with them because COVID hit just about the right time um, where those were not uh, implemented and we have a limited time for them to continue during the end of the year. I believe. I'm not sure exactly the date. Uh, we've had some some concerns from folks that did not make the, the magic three um, 
regarding our process. So we're looking into that. So there's some tweaking to the ordinance we may need to do. Beyond that, we were in a, in, in a posture where introducing several hundred, if not more, uh, additional touch points, uncontrolled touch points throughout the city with the number of infections that we have and the community spread that we have was not a great idea. Um, you know, some of the companies are touting this nanotechnology or so on and so forth with handlebars that are somehow self-cleaning or don't retain certain things, but um, I don't know how effective those are. And the mindset I believe was in conjunction with the fact that we have some permitting issues we wanted to look into as well as the ordinance and with again the the infection numbers the way they are that we were going to hold off uh i think at least at, at least through the end of the year and then reevaluate how do you explain b cycle operating then those are docked so i don't know that they are operating uh ben rogers may be able to they're operating i just talked yeah. with them well, so they, what do they do about sanitation and touch points and everything you just said about scooters? Well, there's a couple of things. One, there's a lot fewer of those and they're docked. So there's more of an ability for them to be uh, centralized and clean at a particular location. I don't know specifically what those companies are doing. I haven't dealt with that aspect of it. Um, perhaps Ben Rogers has some more information on that, but I don't. Uh, but they're a lot more controlled than as we've seen in the past with the scooters that are strewn everywhere. Or anyone within but then they're not cleaning them Alan. that's a beach ride i was on the beach this weekend sitting right next to one of the dock stations and i saw several exchanges where there were no sanitation other than the um riders uh you know doing their wiping well from that standpoint then they should be treated the same as the the scooters you know if they are a touch point that's our, our concern then we should be treating them the same way even though they're not as many but it, it's the problem is there number one. Well, how does how does that how does that relate to the leasing program that Chris talked about? How does that how would we allow scooters to operate um, under a lease program? And that doesn't really change the, the sanitation aspect. Well, our ordinance doesn't apply to the leasing of scooters. They apply to micro mobility programs, which is one of the things we may need to tweak. But our ordinance only deals with those programs. That okay, we but that's a those. technicality. Well, it's it's not because we scooters the way it's it's just like any company. There's one here in Broward County now that rents scooters, right? We can't prevent them. I mean, if you want to go rent a car or rent a scooter, or whatever else, for a month, you know, we, we there's only so much we can do. Again, we're dealing in regulated micro mobility, the frequency of those just being picked up and used. Uh, on the leasing side, you know, it's a little different because you have one owner for a period of, let's say, 10, 10 days um, that has some, not true ownership, but some temporary ownership aspect to it. So they're not going to want it to, you know, parking becomes less of a problem. Maintenance becomes less of a problem. You have one person using it for a three-year period. You don't have multiple people on a daily basis using the same device. So that it's, it's sort of apples and oranges. But when they, when they recharge these devices, isn't that an opportunity for them to sanitize the device? It can be, but I don't know how. I think they do that on a daily basis. So if you have uh, 10, 20 people touching it on a daily basis and then they recharge it, again, it's possible. I mean, we, we can bring it back. It's just that I know oh, we're, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna have many devils out of right now. We're we're gonna, gonna have some folks, some objections with that we're gonna have to deal with from other companies. And then no, um, thank thank you. I know I, I appreciate that. Um, and lastly, I'm sorry, Chris, I, I forgot to ask you because I just did get a text. If someone has a question about the stormwater and how it applies on our trim notice, is there a staff person we could direct them to right away? Yes. Um, stormwater Central. Right, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do better than just give out the 8,000 number, which is where I would usually start just the 24 hour call center. So the 24 hour call center could certainly route somebody to um, the right person. Then that would be 828 Um, It looks as though I can direct people to fortlauderdale.gov forward slash stormwater. Okay. Slash stormwater. Uh, there's frequently asked questions there as well as contact information as well as announcements of public meetings and what those meetings will be focused on. So 
That probably, Vice Mayor, is the best thing to offer on a blanket scale would be to uh, have fortlauderdale.gov forward slash stormwater. Yeah. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and lastly, it was it was difficult to read. The, was well, each one becomes lastly. Okay, okay. And this is the real lastly. Uh, it was difficult to read today the news of the cancellation of the Winterfest boat parade. I mean, it's just, you know, you read things like that and you just, your heart just goes out to everybody. It's, uh, it's, it's sad. It's a sad reflection of the times that we're living in, but uh, thank you everybody for all of your work. I was just uh, was sad to read that today. Well, um, I also want to point out that we're, it may be sad for you as well uh, when we need to have a discussion regarding the boat show and what we as a city need to do to partner with Informa and the Marine Industries Association to ensure that this is going to be a safe uh, activity. And if it cannot be made safe, are we, we as a city going to ask them not to have the boat show? But we can, that's for the subject, that's for a discussion at another time. But we are getting a lot of people from our community asking whether or not this is something that needs to really happen in our city. So, And I know they've presented a very specific plan to follow protocols and social distance and be safe. Um, I also had that conversation. Uh, Chief of Police joined us on a neighborhood meeting, and we discussed that as well. And I believe she commented that she had seen it or had heard it and uh, knew that they had come forward with a plan. But yes, that's a very serious discussion um, for us to have uh, for so many reasons. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner McKenzie. Just want to welcome everybody back. I don't have a, a report for the um, sake of time and moving forward. This is a voting day, so I hope to get out of here early so I can go vote. Okay. Actually, uh, hoping to end this meeting by 3 34 o'clock if we can, so people have time to vote. Um, thank you, and uh, welcome back. Uh, Commissioner Moritis, do you have any, any report? She was first. Oh, excuse me. I meant to say uh, Sorensen. I'm sorry. We get confused a lot. Commissioner Marinus, that's the thing. Don't even think, don't even think about it, hair. Ben. Hey, Ben, don't even try it. Yeah. Don't you have even the same, try that. You have the same hair, too. That's no, right. Nothing, that's right. Nothing. Uh, um, thank you, Mayor. Um, one, I just wanted to thank David Brown, 2020census.gov, 2020census.gov. Ask your neighbor, make, there you go, Vice Mayor's wearing the shirt. Ask your neighbor, hey, pop on the internet, get counted. This is dollars on the table. If we don't get them, uh, we're leaving them on the table. This is representation. This is democracy. Please be counted. Um, also, uh, wanted to get a couple updates. Uh, I think, Chris, from you, if you could just give us um, three, three main buckets. One, Joint Government Campus uh, Center. Two, police station. Uh, three park bonds generally with AECOM. So if you want to take those in turn. And I'll talk about the federal courthouse uh, update because that I'm on the, I'm on the, the, uh, the committee. So I'll, let me, let me, uh, let's hold back on that and I'll give a report. I was planning to give a report and uh, Chris, you want to give a report on the other two? Sure. I'll be Hold happy. on. I didn't, I didn't mention federal courthouse, but great. What well, did you I said, say? Joint sorry, government. joint government center. Joint government center. Oh, yeah, sorry. The government Stay. center police station and park bonds. And then, yeah, I'd love to hear uh, courthouse, your, your update too. Thanks. I'll probably defer to the mayor as well on the joint government complex. Neither of us could give you an update, but uh, we've both been on all of the calls together. So I'll figure out who wants to do that. With the police building tonight, uh, before you will be the uh, contract for architectural services to move forward. Um, I believe that the construction firms that were uh, interviewed and presented uh, did so last week. I understand they'll be ranked tomorrow and when they're ranked, we'll then publish the final outcome of that process. And it will then be negotiated and come before you in the future for an additional contract. But if all goes well tonight with uh, AECOM's contract, we'll, we'll have an architect on board to start the design process. Um, <clears throat> with the park bond, uh, there's been projects that have been started. You've seen uh, some of those come to the commission after they've gone to the Parks, Rec, and Beaches Advisory Board. Uh, two of those are, are Virginia Park, Schumann Park and uh, Young Park in, in your neighborhood, as well as Hector Park. Um, there's been land acquisition that's occurring. 
across the city in areas of defined need. Um, and uh, that's ongoing. And uh, we uh, have a consulting firm under, uh, under contract to be our program manager for the parks bond. And they will start to begin with uh, design and, and implementation. So um, that one moving forward well now, police moving forward well now. And uh, let's see if the mayor wants to bring, you want to do an update on the joint yeah, government council? Yeah, sure. Um, so we've been meeting regularly uh, with the uh, with the county with regard to the uh, joint government complex. Um, one of the snags that has uh, developed uh, is the fact that while we're talking about a joint government complex, there's also a conversation going on with regard to the um, coastal link, uh, the, the rail the rail link between the cities in South Florida, and. Um, uh, the reason why I, I raised the concern in connection with that coastal link project is because there's talk about uh, building a bridge through the city of Fort Lauderdale, a 50, approximately 55, 56 foot tall bridge from the base. And, um, uh, and, and it concerns me uh, for a bridge has plenty of other issues that, uh, that, are, that are important in and of themselves. Uh, and, I, and I think we've discussed at length at previous meetings my objections to a bridge running through the middle of our city. But also, we're talking about building a joint government center right at where the peak of the bridge would be. And what it would do is, coming from the west, it would completely block the building. So here we're talking about spending a lot of money for design and trying to create a, an iconic look as you're coming into the city. And... Uh, FDOT is looking to build a bridge right in the middle of our building. So the county, uh, I think, has become sensitive to that. And, uh, and, and so in the last few weeks, we've met with uh, Zuskovich, uh, the Zuskovich, Bernard Zuskovich's firm, and Mr. Zuskovich himself to uh, show us what it would look like if, uh, if such a bridge uh, would, would be built in the middle of Fort Lauderdale and how it would be juxtaposed against a potential building. And uh, so we met with him twice, um, and uh, I can tell you that the results were not very promising. Um, the type of bridge he, he anticipated was, was uh, really had made many shortcomings in my point of view. But I, I, wanna, uh, I was going to use today during my, uh, during my reports to uh, put out to the commission, to our commission, that uh, the city that the city is invited to attend a workshop which the county is having on this very issue on Thursday this this Thursday do we know what time it is it's Chris it's on the agenda that starts at one o'clock okay I'll, I'll find out more specific okay we'll try to get a more time certain but it would be the same presentation that we were given by Mr. Zuskovich this past week and I feel that I can't make any decisions on behalf of the commission. So I invite uh, any commissioner that's interested in participating and, and seeing the presentation to, uh, to do so. It's done on Zoom and, uh, and to be able to, part to see exactly what Mr. Zuskovich is talking about. Again, my concern is we build this supposedly beautiful building which hasn't been designed yet and we're gonna run a bridge right in the middle of it. So, um, uh, so it kind of put things on pause and uh, until we can figure out what we're doing, uh, needless to say, I, I keep pushing for a tunnel through the middle of our city so that we don't have this problem, nor do we have a lot of the other problems that a bridge would, would generate. So, uh, so that's the status of where we are with regard to the joint government consent. Uh, what, can, what can we do to drive the bridge option forward, Mayor? You mean the, the, the tunnel option? Sorry, forward? the tunnel option forward. Uh, what I would recommend is that you, if you could, if you have the time, see the Ziskovich presentation. Okay. And, and I think that will make everyone realize how important it is that we have the tunnel. And, uh, um, and, uh, and I, think, I think the tunnel idea is starting to uh, get, get legs. Um, and I think that Bertha Henry, understanding my feeling about building another divide through the middle of our city uh, uh, resonates in, in her mind and her experiences and her heart. And I think that uh, uh, the idea, of course, is just trying to find the money. And, and uh, you know, with the federal government looking to put together a, 
a uh, infrastructure bill, whether it be under this con Congress or the next Congress, um, you know, we should be ready with a shovel ready project because uh, we have met with transportation officials before in 2019, in 20, when did we meet? In 2018, 2019, 2019. Uh, and we went to Washington, excuse me, and uh, uh, those folks uh, uh, were, were, were very sympathetic to what we're looking to do. And, uh, and I don't think that the county or the city or the state alone would have to pay for this. So, uh, so, so to answer your question, uh, look at the presentation and then, um, uh, and we'll come back and have a discussion at a, at a conference meeting and see what we should do as a commission going forward. All right, great. Thanks, Mayor. The last, last question I have, it's, it's probably for Chris and Raj. Um, Chris and Raj, we're making great progress on the, you know, seven and a half mile of sewer forest main in, in my neighborhood and going north. And um, can you just give us a, a quick update progression um, timeline, please? And also what happened today on 15th Yeah, so let's, uh, I see Raj yep. there. Let's hear from Public Works. I'll, I'll give the punchline, which is it's um, ahead of schedule and on budget, which is two great things to yep. hear. Um, but uh, go ahead, Raj. Let's talk about that. And let's talk about the... Uh, contractor that hit the pipe on Cordova today. Yes, uh, the information uh, that we could see the markings on the pavement and it would imply that uh, somebody was working there and uh, maybe to do the directional drilling for whatever utilities because the pipe was installed in 2002 and it is, you know, it's not possible that unless something uh, had hit that it would uh, it would uh, kind of start leaking and we found out based on all the reports that i have we found out through the uh, sewage that was oozing through the pavement and that's what the that was the information that we got called in we immediately dispatched and what we did was that we isolated the entire system in that area that means that we shut down uh, all the pump stations that were feeding that force main and we started trucking the, uh, you know, the switch out. So as so a result that of that, yeah. So that, that was today's event. So that was today's event. And so we were able to stem the flow of the sewage uh, from, uh, from, the, from the environment. But are you saying that there was another utility involved that, uh, that uh, broke our pipe? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I think I think probably there was some contractor, private contractor working in that area. We are still trying to trace that, who was there, what caused it, et cetera. But as far as from our end, our responsibility was concerned, we immediately cordoned off the area, shut the system down, started trucking out to keep the environmental impact to a minimum. Still, by the time we were out there responding, some, uh, some amount of water did get into the waterway. And, and that, was, uh, that was in the Seminole River. So we have issued the advisory. So it could have been, you know, it, it could have been somewhat, uh, somewhat bad, but uh, the staff was able to intercept and we are using the truck to truck it out. And, and we have issued the, the no recreation advisory for three rivers. So that is the latest I have. We, because the, the uh, we did have the inquiry from Sun Sentinel. I provided them with all the answers. And, uh, and, and we are hoping that whatever damage or you know, the excavation we had to do to determine what exactly happened, that type of restoration should be completed by the end of business today. So, so that is the information, that's the latest information and all the information I have. All right, well, please stay on top of that. We wanna know who the perpetrator was because it's just another terrible you know, spill into our waterways that really should never have happened. Chris, did you want to add to that? No, I don't want to add to that. That was good. That was a good update of what happened today. Now let's get back to, I just want to make sure we don't lose sight of Commissioner Sorensen's question, which is an update on the seven and a half mile run um, of pipe, where we are with that progress and uh, uh, when we anticipate that pipe being in, in service. Yes, uh, so regarding that, regarding that uh, seven and a half million, seven and a half mile uh, our redundant force main. It's about, I would say about 35% complete. And uh, by, the, by next month, we should be about 50% done. We are still on target to, to finish all the work. 
for uh, for June of next year. And one of the things that we are adding is that we want to just make sure that, uh, as you know, this particular project was like a design in a rush. So we did the best we could. And there were certain components that kind of got left out. So we are picking up the pieces such that as soon as this construction is over, we are able to provide the interconnects such that we can transfer the flow and make the other repairs that are necessary. So those components that were kind of got left out, we are adding them in increments just to make sure. So, you know, when you see certain items coming before you in the coming uh, commission, uh, commission meetings, you will know what it is for. So we are just making sure that uh, we keep everything on track and that it is functional as quickly as possible. Anything Thank you, else? Raj. Yes. Anything else, Commissioner Sorensen? Thanks, Mayor. That's it. Okay, great. Thank you so much. A uh, couple of things. Uh, let me give you all an update on the federal courthouse. Uh, after a process of elimination, it appears that uh, that the the site that's now being looked at more seriously is on uh, Southeast Third uh, Avenue. This is also known as the Hudson site, and it's right near. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the cross street. Um, I think it's, is it fifth? Anyway, sixth? Fifth or sixth. Between fifth and sixth, there is a, a, a larger site. It's not a small site um, that, uh, for example, like the ones we've been dealing with before, which were two to two and a half acres, is a larger site. It's come within budget um, and it's within the downtown Iraq and, and, uh, there will have to be some adjustments we would have to make in terms of zoning, but um, uh, but uh, Mr. Hudson and the General Services Administration seem to be working uh, together in trying to make this the right fit. The GSA um, uh, is excited about it. Um, there are just a couple of issues. Number one, uh, we have to get neighborhood input, and uh, for a you know federal courthouse building to be built on this site, and and. Commissioner Sorensen will be looking to you to try to work with uh, the courthouse committee to see how we can uh, best work this into the onto the site. But the other big thing is um, there's a 30 inch uh, water line or sewer line. Is it a sewer line or a water line? I think it's a water line. So they refer to it as a utility line. So I think it's water. It's a water line that crosses through the that site. A big water line. That's probably a sewer line. 30 inch would be a huge. Okay, well, there's a utility line that runs through the site that um, uh, is going to cost money to move. And um, Chris, do you want to uh, give us some details on that? Yeah, so I'm learning more as I as I go and actually learned some, some yesterday. Um, there is obviously that utility there. Um, I, I had a conversation with the auditor yesterday who's been a part of this committee as well for a period of time. Um, and he and I have something else on the, on the calendar. Um, I understand that there has been some discussion along the course of this project that uh, if if we were going to have a city contribution to it, it would come in the form of some type of utility dollar as opposed to general fund dollars. So um, I think the GSA is requesting at this point that we move that line at our expense so that they can um, build on the site. I need to confirm that that's what their request is. And then I'll bring back a recommendation to the commission and see if that's something we want to do. Well, if I mean, in order for the federal courthouse to be built, that's the only place that it can be built. So we have to move the line. The question is who's paying for it? Correct, and what it costs. And what it costs. So you'll be able to bring that back to us at some future meeting? Uh, probably as soon as the next meeting. Okay. Um, I did want to have to, you know, I learned from uh, learned yesterday as, as part of my negotiating posture might have been in conflict with some of the things that the former commission, as well as Mr. Herbst, did that. Uh, negotiated to, I was really more just looking for a good deal for the city. So um, I need to learn a little bit about what was offered um, previously and John will help me uh, get on that and then I'll, I'll bring back the okay. cost and recommendation. Um, plastic foam ban. Uh, we've been getting a lot of people who have been contacting us to see what we can do to ban styrofoam from being used on public property. Um, I've also added the idea of no smoking on public property. And when I say public property, I mean property over which the city has jurisdiction. Um, uh, 
is this something you want our city attorney to continue to research to see whether or not this uh, is important for our community? Any, any? Yes, uh, please. Yes. All right. All right. So, Alan, could you please continue to pursue your research on that? Yeah, we'll continue researching. Um, I, I earlier mentioned about leaf blowers, and I think Alan will, will do some research on that too about banning them and only allowing vacuum devices. We talked about parking rates, talked about the government campus. Um, okay, the New River Inn, this is in District 2. Um, Mr. Campbell has been in default of his lease for, he hasn't paid his rent in a couple of years. And he's behind in many, many thousands, tens of thousands of dollars. Um, I want to recommend to the commission that we find him in default and we, we get a new occupant for that, for that site. There are people, um, I, know, I know a restaurant in the area wants to move in there. Um, do we have a consensus on the commission to move forward and default Mr. Campbell? Yes. Uh, Vice, Mr. Vice Mayor, do you agree with that? Yes, I, I've heard that a lot, obviously. Yes, it is in District 2, and uh, that's such a very special site, uh, and I, I think that it could be activated in a way that would be uh, much improved. So, yes, I, I agree with you. How about the rest of the commission? you good with that? Uh, uh, Mayor. Yes, sir. Um, I do not agree with that. I think there's a series of events that have taken place uh, over on the on that river um, from all the construction um, that we've had there um, that at one point you could even access uh, uh, that site unless you were going down by the by the, uh, the historic piece. And um, I just think there's a lot more here than what than what we see. I think we need to delve into it uh, before we make uh, um, this type of uh, a move, especially in the climate that we have where restaurants are struggling. They, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. Okay, so um, uh, he just opened up a vegan uh, 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 restaurant there uh, full time now. Before he was doing a lot of catering and not uh, so much uh, um, open um, daily. So I just think we need to either, either bring him in here or find out more before we make this type of a move to a person who took that place um, when we were in a very, very bad place and he improved it uh, uh, with the historic guidelines. Uh, uh, and I just don't think we should move that quickly when he just opened up a new restaurant in there. Well, um, how many months is he, is he in default? Do you have an idea? I'd have to, I wasn't prepared to talk about that today. So I'll, I'd have to get that. I know it's there's several months in default. I know there's some property tax issues with the property. Um, I know I've got complaints from the Marine Industries Association on uh, those boats uh, docked there for longer than a certain period of time. All right, so why don't we bring this up? I can bring it up as an agenda item. Yeah, so so, so uh, maybe I'm, I'm misunderstanding something. You just said something different, Chris. You said something about the boat being docked. Are we talking about the dock or the, or the restaurant? No, I was just mentioning, uh, Commissioner, that there's an assortment of different things I've heard related to this property. Some of them relate to the building. Some of them relate to, uh, you know, complaints that I've got from Marine Industries Association on those uh, docks or on those boats that are docked there in front of the house. Um, but I didn't come to this meeting prepared to itemize exactly where they were. Um, so if I can get my ducks in a row, I'll bring that forward. I'd like to see some, some clarity and, and separate the two issues uh, so we don't do something that, that might, um, you know, impact uh, the, this restaurant that is open uh, as we speak. Uh, I know he had some issues with the, with the dock. We were going to see if we could, we could uh, uh, waive some of the rents. I think we determined we weren't going to do that, but let's see how we can go back to him and approach him for, uh, for, for collecting or whatever it was we were going to decide we could do. And I think the city or auditor had um, used an analogy of someone else, how we had uh, um, waived some fees. So just on, on the dockage. But on the restaurant, you know, let's find out what's going on before we, you know, we jump, we jump the gun here and, um, and regret it, especially in the environment now where restaurants are barely, barely um, hanging on. I think we do have the interest in starting that discussion. I do in the spirit of full uh, disclosure with the commission, it's just a matter of our, uh, of, of being in compliance with our real estate transactions. Um, I want to say in order to start that discussion, 
uh, we sent two letters of default last week. So I don't want you to think that those letters haven't been sent. Typically what those do is they start to generate the discussion around the fact that- Default on the restaurant or default on the dock? Um, the lease. lease. The lease. Default on the lease. So the lease, lease the encompasses, or the dock? encompasses everything. It does? Uh, well, let, me, uh, let me let me get with Louisa and get an answer for you and I'll have I, it I for think you. they're both separate. All right, so let's let them let me give the city let's let's give the city manager a chance to get all the uh, details on this and we'll we'll bring it up as an agenda item okay. at the next conference meeting and that'll give Mr. Campbell an opportunity to speak on his behalf but we've been we've been cheated on a lot of months of rent here and he came before us once before that long was before the COVID, that was asking, the for, asking for an abatement of rent on the dock. and uh, yeah on the dock yeah but, but well, he has, I, I, he has I don't want to mix the two. Well, all right, let's find out if they are bifurcated and let's see where we are okay. on that. So, okay. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Uh, okay, that's it for my uh, comments. Anything else? Then we'll move into communications. Um, we have a communication from the Beach Redevelopment Advisory Board. Uh, this is with regard to... Um, uh, Mayor? Yeah. I just wanted to mention with regards to that communication, there, there was a lot of uh, concern about cuts, severe cuts to the A1A streetscape program. I've talked to the city manager on this and it's all taken care of now. And we are not going to be cutting the 142 trees, the street lighting and the decorative concrete along the entire project. City manager says that everything is okay and uh, the product is fully restored to its original scope. They were, gonna, they were not going to plant the 142 trees, and now we are. Yes, that, and they were not, and they were not going to do the decorative concrete, and they were not going to do the lighting, and that was a big concern. That's what this communication is about. The Brab uh, expressed themselves and uh, were very concerned, and they were against that those cuts, but it's all been worked out. Okay. You want to clarify one thing? Yes. Sir. I hate to be splitting hairs here, but what has been restored in that project is its budget. And if we can if we can complete the whole scope within the budget that it originally had assigned, we will do the whole scope. But we haven't bid the project yet, so I can't tell you that it's going to come in within the budget that exists for the project. But the amount that was originally um, assigned the side of the project is, is there. Is there. Correct. Okay. Yes. So there we was have to work in that budget. Right. There was a just. It looked like they were going to cut about 1.7 million, but that's been restored. Chris, do we know when that's going to go out to bid? Uh, it'll be soon. I, I don't. I can't tell you if it's going to be in the next couple of weeks, but it's. Uh, we check with the CRA, and I'll, I'll I'll get you a date. Does that include the sculpture of the District Two Commissioner? I wasn't sure whether that is. <laughs> okay. That's uh, funny. Do I have anybody on? The, before we move on, Mayor, do I have anybody on the call here that can answer that? Clarence, maybe uh, let's see you're on the call. Could you uh, brief the vice mayor as to when that project's going to go to the market? I'll have to, uh, uh, Mr. Manager, I'll have to get that information and get back to you. I'm not exactly sure of the date. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, the next is the complete count advisory committee. They're asking for us to do a proclamation, which we're doing tonight, and uh, to keep raising the issue at, during all the meetings, which we will continue to do. And then they want us to take a picture of ourselves, a selfie, uh, and I guess post it on our on our uh, website. Um, anyone's interested in having their picture taken and put it on the website, please contact our picture taker our clerk. <laughs> Anything else? That's it on that, I guess. All right, let's move on to uh, let's move on to our old business, business one. We have Las Olas Marina update. Who will be giving that report? Ben Rogers will be leading that report this afternoon. Yes, good afternoon, Mayor and Commissioners. Ben Rogers, Transportation Mobility. Um, I do have an update on the pre-development efforts for the Los Angeles Marina Project. And on the call with me today, I have Raj Verma from Public Works and also Robert Lockery uh, representing the developer. Um, uh, next slide, please. 
So this is a quick snapshot overview of where we stand today. Um, I'm going to go through the first two or three uh, rather quickly, and then the next four items we'll talk in more detail on the following slide. So the BOCHO agreement, as, uh, as the Vice Mayor alluded to today, uh, we've been uh, received word that uh, all the parties have signed the agreement uh, earlier today or, or late last night. Um, and so that is in place, and that was one of the uh, required uh, steps. The parking agreement, as you're aware, um, July 7th uh, was passed through PM number 20258. And, um, and we're working. Ben, yes, uh, can, can I interrupt you for just a second? Is that Ben speaking? Yes. Yeah. Ben, do we have an, a copy of that agreement? We are, uh, I, I believe we're not privy to the copy of the agreement since we're a third party. I could defer to the city attorney or maybe Mr. Lockery for additional comments. And we, we uh, our interpretation is the, the, the lease specifically says that we are entitled to the delivery of that agreement. If there are concerns about trade secrets, obviously, you know, under, under uh, Florida statutes, there may be some redactions on trade secrets as defined therein. But according to the lease, we are entitled to the delivery of it. and. Not to you know, obviously be difficult, but we've heard a lot of representations uh, for over a year with regards to the parties being in agreement. And uh, beyond the fact that they'll be recording a memorandum of lease, uh, we would want to see that agreement pursued in place if the commission so desires. But that's what is uh, that's what's called for in the lease. Mr. Lockery, you're on the line. I am. So. Does your client have any objection to our getting a copy of that lease, or that agreement rather? Yeah, certainly there will be a uh, memorandum of lease that is being actually circulated right now by the Marine Industry Association's uh, Council. Um, it has been signed. We're just getting the different copies together so that they've been signed as separate parties. It'll be recorded this week. We will certainly be providing that. I understand what the city attorney is asking for, and he mentioned that to me last night. Certainly talk to our client as well as the other two parties. Um, to see if there's any objection to doing that or if there isn't a method we can do it um, as the city uh, attorney alluded to, um, you know, redatting any trade secrets, et cetera. So I can't, conf I, I, I cannot on my own say that we'll turn over the lease itself. The lease has been signed consistent with our lease with the city, the obligation to do that. And uh, uh, come here. we will, we'll of course do whatever we need to do, Mayor. Let me put it that way. <laughs> okay. Do your best. You got it. Okay, I'm sorry, Ben, I didn't, didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, absolutely, the, the next item is uh, the State of Florida Cabinet Review. This was scheduled, I believe, in June originally, uh, but due to COVID, it, it got pushed, and so they're scheduled to go up to Tallahassee in September to, um, to go through their application process. Uh, the next four items, like I said, we'll talk about in more detail on the, on the upcoming slides, but there, there were some impacts to the infrastructure uh, related to this project, and then there's in, uh, other infrastructure that was discussed as part of this project um, and, and what would be impacted or not. Over the, the, the life of this project, some things have changed and been amended and adjusted, and uh, over the last month or two, we finalized some of our positions. So next slide, please. So out on the, on the barrier island, in, um, there's a lot of utilities in this area. Uh, as you are fully aware of, they'll be dredging a lot of the land, which will impact the underground uh, uh, infrastructure. And so the first thing is that SunTex is going to be relocating the lift station. Um, please advance the slide, uh, which moves it to the east. Um, and this is estimated around $400,000, which is 100% uh, uh, SunTex responsibility to do and perform. Uh, advance the slide. Uh, the city, however, is going to fund the components of the lift station. Uh, the lift station itself in the current state is failing and aging, um, and the city has been working and, and evaluating uh, the need that if this development wasn't going to take place, what the cost would be. Uh, right now, that cost uh, for rehabilitation of the components was $2.5 million, and so what we're proposing to do is, is uh, give that or use that, those funds, once identified, uh, to Suntex, and they will do the work uh, on our behalf. Ben, yes, sir. As mentioned during the uh, uh, John's report earlier tonight, under budget earlier today, rather under budget. So, where would the two point five million be coming from? Yeah, so I'll, I'll make a brief statement, and I'll, I'll turn it over to Raj for further clarification. My understanding is this pump station has been evaluated over the last couple of years, um, 
and what needs to happen. And it was never formalized in the CIP because of all the development talk and, and not understanding the true cost and impact of what this development would bring to the area. And so over the last couple of months, when I've been working with Raj and Public Works, um, Raj has been um, in the loop and understands that he'll have to reprioritize some of his events. So Raj, do you have any comments on that? Uh, Mr. Vice Mayor, to be honest with you, since as, as, as ben, ben has said, that this was not in the CIP because it was a moving target. So uh, frankly speaking, I do not know the answer. It is not in the budget, but one of the one of the proposals that I had because of that reason that the developer is going to front end the cost and by the time it's, it's all done, then we are going to reimburse. So that is one possibility other than uh, we will have to go back and see uh, what uh, what projects we may have to reappropriate. So the developer is going to fund uh, upfront the entire 2.9 million of project. Yes, that's that. Yeah, that's if they want to. I mean, there are two alternatives. One is, you know, and it might be just too late uh, to wait until we request the budget uh, next year or they can front end the project and then we can reimburse them after we place the project in next year's CIP. And Raj, are you comfortable with the way that formula was determined? In other words, what they would have had to do worth about 400,000 and then the rest of it, 2.5 million uh, under our jurisdiction and responsibility? Yes, Mr. Vice Mayor, I think we have consulted, I have consulted with at least, uh, you know, three of our staff engineers, uh, both the, from the operation maintenance perspective, from the design perspective, and the numbers, they seem to be in line with what we have estimated and what we have spent in similar type of projects. Okay, thank you. Yep, welcome. Please yeah, continue. So Mr. Vice, Vice Mayor, I think one point of clarification is we have kind of um, negotiated ourselves to this point of the 400,000 and the 2.5 million. To Raj's point, if we can get uh, some text to front it and we pay back, uh, or if we have to abandon a CIP, uh, we still need to work through those details, but um, we, we've at least got kind of the, the, the lane or the alley that we're gonna work within. Um, the, the next thing out here on the Bear Island is the, uh, the, the sewer pipe. And so, next slide, please. The sewer pipe that is directly impacted by the development is highlighted right now in a solid purple line. Um, and over the last couple of months, we've evaluated uh, the two sewer pipes. One is a, a downstream, one is upstream. So the dotted line is actually flowing from the north to the south. It goes to a, a, a manhole or a, a pivot point there and then comes back to the north. The marina itself will tie into the, the solid purple line and have a direct impact to the capacity of that pipe. It will not have a direct impact to the dotted line. And so over the last couple of months, and there's been different numbers and different conversations of the cost of this work, um, we've determined that Suntex will uh, fund and do the work on the solid purple line since they have a direct impact and that Raj and his team are, are evaluating the capacity of the dotted line and the age of the dotted line to figure out if uh, we need to see if there's synergies that exist, why the roadway is torn up, why there's construction efforts in the area to go ahead and replace that or if it is at a, a point in its life where the capacities uh, are well within the pipe's life. Will we need both? And will we need both conduits? So it, it's my understanding, and, and Raj, if you want to chime in on the engineering, is that this is one continual pipe and it's flowing north to south until you get down to the end of the dotted line, and then it flows north or south to north. Um, and so it's one pipe, um, and only the solid purple part is the direct impact that uh, Marina will have. Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, in response to your question, we explored that, and I think this is something that we can live with. I mean, I wish there was only one pipe, but that's the way they have designed it. And since they are going to pay for their portion, we will be responsible for our portion. And hopefully, as Ben said, that we can have this energy. So once the road is dug up, that we can do our part. But the but the but the design is not going to compromise the. Uh, the uh, the quality of the system, will it? No, sir. No, sir. Absolutely not. Okay. Please continue, Ben. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, advance the slide. 
Uh, the next item out here is a water pipe. Um, Suntex does have a direct impact on it and will be replacing all of the existing uh, pipes. And next slide. One more. Uh, and they will also be funding and completing the turn lane modifications uh, that is just outside the garage onto Birch Avenue. Uh, I, I do need to say on these two items, on the lift station and on the turn lane modifications, we need to look into um, the legal aspects of that and probably have to have a, a secondary agreement, some kind of development agreement or something along those lines to um, take care of those terms and conditions. On the other ones, uh, the other issues is part of the building uh, permit condition. Uh, next slide, please. And so the timeline on this, uh, obviously near term today, we're talking about this and open for discussion. Uh, as I referenced earlier, state of Florida in September. Uh, in October, we're hoping to bring back any remaining items, such as that development agreement or anything that we need to do, finalize everything. And then sometime at the end of October, early November, uh, Suntex is looking to occupy the site. Uh, when they occupy the site, there will be some change of conditions out there. You'll start to see some MOT impacts. You'll see construction parking uh, and probably some construction noise during the daytime as they uh, start their work. Um, and on the long term, you have pump station utility and site work that's scheduled for six to nine months. And then you have the upland marina and promenade, 18 to 22 months. Uh, right now, I believe SunTex is believe that if they get some utility work done right away, that those two time periods can overlap. Uh, and that they can have substantial completion done for the boat show of 2022. Great, thank you. Any questions of Ben? Okay, I hear none. Uh, very good, thank you so much. We appreciate the report. Uh, we, did we have anyone who wanted to speak on business one? There no, no one, okay. Uh, Moving on to uh, CF1, this is IT General Control Security Baseline Review. Who will be giving that report? It'll be an auditor's report, and then I'd like to uh, allow our IT staff to respond. Okay. Uh, Mr. Herbst, you have the floor. John, let's see. You'll see him online? No. You'll see his name in the spot it has been. All right, so um, <laughs> all right, so we can't do the executive closed door yet because it's not four o'clock. Do you want to run through the CRA agenda real quick and yeah, then we, see if John right. comes back? Okay, so why don't we, uh, why don't we, uh, uh, let's see what I'm thinking of. Um, can, not adjourn. Uh, no, what's the word we want? We just uh, Suspense. Yes. Suspense. Okay. Um, why don't we take? A, we'll recess the uh, conference meeting. Thank you. I knew I could use I could use your legal assistance on these things. Uh, <laughs> we'll take a recess on the conference meeting, and we will uh, we'll now have the CRA meeting since we cannot contact John Herbst, nor can we have the closed door session until four p.m. So um, um, so. I'll begin this, the uh, CRA board meeting. Jeff, would you like to call the roll? Commissioner Moritis. You waved. She waved. Here. Yeah. Vice Chair Glassman. Here. Commissioner McKenzie. Commissioner McKenzie. Uh, Commissioner Sorensen. Here. Chair Trentels here. So let me get to that. Uh, before we begin the meeting, I have to read this. The City of Fort Lauderdale will be hosting its meetings in a virtual format until further notice. The public can listen to and view virtual meetings at fortlauderdale.gov forward slash FLTV and youtube.com forward slash city of Fort Lauderdale, all spelled out, as well as on Comcast channel 78 and AT&T U-verse channel 99. For those who want to speak on an agenda item and have not already signed up to I'm do here. so. Okay, please visit www.fortlauderdale.gov forward slash V as Victor C DC meetings to sign up. 
To ensure that the same decorum as our in-person meetings, we ask that you please abide by the following guidelines. Please refrain, refrain from any behavior that is disruptive, distractive, profane, or inhibits the meeting in any way. Two, while you are on the phone waiting for your opportunity to speak, please mute the meeting broadcast on FLTV, YouTube, Comcast, and AT&T. If you're watching simultaneously, avoid delays with the broadcast. I will call upon you when it is your turn to speak and also notify you when your time has expired. City staff has automatically added speakers to uh, speakers in to the listen only mode and you will be unmuted to speak when <clears throat> recognized. Three, once you have completed speaking, you will be muted and you may either hang up to exit the meeting or stay connected to listen to the remainder of the meeting. So um, <clears throat> right now we have M1. Motion to approve minutes for the July 7th, 2020 CRA meeting. Do I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Move. Second. Move and seconded. Thank you. Please call the roll. And, and just for the record, Commissioner McKenzie did. Uh, yes, he, had, he, is, he, is, uh, he is here in the meeting. Yes. Commissioner Moritis. Commissioner Moritis, unmute yourself. Yes. Vice Chair Glassman? Yes. Commissioner McKenzie? Commissioner McKenzie? Unmute yourself. Is he disconnected? He disconnected. Okay. Commissioner Sorensen? Yes. Chair okay. Gentiles? Yes. Yes. Oh, great. You're back. Okay. I never left. I had a problem here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. Um, M2, motion approving a forgivable loan in the amount of $290,000 to Juni Investment. Is it Juni or Juni? Juni. <laughs> Juni Investment Group, LLC, for Donna's Caribbean Restaurant, located at 2012. Northwest 6th Street, delegating authority to the executive director <clears throat> to increase the award to the full allocation of $325,000 subject to, to satisfaction of certain conditions. Do I hear a motion? I can't, I'm sorry, Mayor. Can we talk about this for a minute? Yeah, yeah, we will. I just want to put a motion on the floor. Uh, because... Um, don't want to move the item? Not yet, because... No, no don't... I don't want to move this item because we had an issue before with the HOA and hasn't that been resolved? To, hasn't that been resolved? I think it was resolved from staff perspective. I don't I don't know if we've um, resolved it with the HOA in terms of what, what, what they needed or wanted or what they could do. So even just for the public's uh, um, conversation now, I want to make sure um, Ben um, that we did talk with um, um, Dr. Beasley uh, and resolve the neighborhood issues. Uh, it is a very tricky corner. Uh, I'm all in favor of the project. I just have a problem with um, how we're gonna get traffic in and out of that street. To me, Mayor, this is just like the, um, uh, the uh, Starbucks on Davey and Federal. Right. It's, a great, it's a great amenity but it backs up that intersection and going into that neighborhood. So, and Ben did explain to me that it met all of the, uh, I think DRC um, requirements, but there were a few things that the neighbors were talking about. I want to make sure he followed back up with, uh, with Dr. Pittman before I, before I move this item. Um, Clarence, can you give us an update on this? Yes, um, I did speak with Dr. Pittman and uh, they were supposed to have a board meeting. They didn't have the board meeting, but Dr. Pittman did go and poll all of the uh, individual members. And my understanding is that 16 members uh, basically approved and there were seven that did not approve and four were like undecided. As of what date? Um, this was, I talked to her last week I talked to her last week, I think on Wednesday of last week. Okay, and Ben, what what did what did you uh 
end up doing? Ben Rogers. Ben there? I see his name. He's on mute. Let me send him. Yeah, because he was supposed to oh, uh, reach out to her last week. I want to make sure that everybody touched bases before we move forward. Did you ever talk to her? So, Ms. Pittman, Dr. Pittman? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we're scheduled to go to the HOA meeting next week to talk about uh, all transportation mobility issues in the neighborhood and traffic calming um, aside from this project. Well, what was your latest information with regard to the neighborhood association's uh, response to the request? Uh, for the, Mr. For Mayor, the can I? Yes, Clarence, go ahead. So um, in, in, in her polling, there was uh, the suggestion that there be some sort of traffic calming device uh, that would be put in, I guess it's on 20th. Um, and, and, and two of the suggestions were a speed hump. And then uh, another suggestion was like a gate arm, some, some sort of uh, arm that would be triggered, whether it's by um, some sort of laser or whatever. But uh, we, we kind of suggested that if there was going to be some sort of uh, traffic calming device, it would be the speed hump and kind of stay away from the idea of uh, an arm, whether it's uh, um, uh, electronically induced or whether it's pressure that comes, I mean, uh, uh, the weight of the car coming by and triggering some sort of uh, motion from the gate arm. But they were all uh, in agreement that some sort of traffic calming device would help. The restaurant owner agreed to ship in and pay for the installation of uh, uh, if it was going to be a speed hump or whatever. So, well, Clarence, is speed the issue or is congestion the issue? I think the congestion is, is probably the is probably the issue. Um, how would this generate? Not, how would this? How would this? How would this restaurant make cars go faster? I'm not understanding that aspect of it. It would well, seem to. That's if, what we're. According to Commissioner McKenzie, if we liken it to the Starbucks on Davy, it's a congestion issue. It's not a speed issue. So a speed hump or, or, or a gate is, is irrelevant. I'm not understanding what the issue is here. I thought it was, I thought it was congestion. Ben, do you want to weigh in on this? Congestion and traffic going back into the neighborhood was their, their main concerns, according to Dr. Pittman's interruption of our last meeting. And the, 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 the Entities are supposed to get together and, and, and make sure she was satisfied. I know Ben and I talked a few days ago, about a week ago, uh, and they were supposed to let me know where Dr. Pittman stood. I know that they met the criteria of DRC. We all know that. Um, um, we know that they can build this place. That's not the issue. The issue is um, whether or not the HOA Well, um, okay. I just got I just got a message from Ms. Uh, Dr. Pittman, and? and I think what she uh, I think what Ben alluded to earlier um, that he's coming to her meeting, and at that from that meeting they'll they'll come to a resolve on um, what they can do, uh, and she is aware that they met the criteria of DRC, and so, but I think they they want an opportunity to to um, speak at that meeting um, to you and Clarence. Maybe you might want to join them, and we'll be back in two weeks and we can we can approve this. So I don't want to move forward with it until Dr. Pittman um, and Dorset Riverbend has an opportunity to give us the information that they um, halted us from moving forward before break um, this time. If may okay. I have a may I have a question for Clarence? Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Clarence, when this does come back to us, um, on the CAM, exhibit 10 is identified as a meeting with the with the HOA, but it doesn't look like that is what that is. And July 15th, it does not look like that is uh, Exhibit 10, a meeting with the HOA. And I'm confused by this because even at the end of this document on page two of two, on the top paragraph under traffic analysis, it says 
that a tentative meeting has been scheduled for July 16th with everybody, but I guess that didn't happen. So I just want to just, can we just be clear on what this document is, what this meeting was, and then when I hopefully see the minutes from the other meeting, then we can, you know, put that behind this one. But the, Exhibit 10 was very confusing to me. We'll, we'll straighten that out, uh, Vice Mayor, and we'll make it more clear. Well, how come, this wasn't, how come this wasn't done over the break? You know, I hate that these people waited all, all these weeks during the summer for this money and, uh, you know, is holding them back again. And, uh, I mean, why wasn't this, why wasn't this resolved all the, you know, all these many weeks? Uh, I think, man, I think, I think the HOAs take a break too during this the time. The HOA had. So they, they didn't meet last month. So I think they're meeting this month. So that gives them the opportunity to, to actually talk to the members other than getting on the phone polling as, uh, uh, the, the manager of CRA indicated. So, she wanted to have a uh, the, the Zoom meeting to um, just run it by him again, ask questions of Ben Rogers' group, and then they, I'm sure they'll go ahead and um, 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 come out and say uh, it's okay to move forward or they don't want to move forward. But again, the project meets the meets the, uh, the criteria um, um, uh, of a uh, um, development of um, two. Uh, Classification, so they, they're very much aware that they just had some concerns from HOA, so they want to work those out. So if we just hold off two weeks. I think um, it won't hurt anybody. All right, uh, we have five people from from Juni Investment who have signed up to speak. Um, is uh, Shaquilla Carter there? Shaquilla, I saw yes. Yes, I'm here. Shaquille, you have you been listening to the discussion? Yes. Um, what is your position with uh, with uh, the investment group? Uh, I'm the assistant to Dr. Golson. It's his business, his company. Okay, is Dr. Golson Golson there? Yes, he should be on as well. Would you mind if I spoke we spoke to him and see what his position is with regard to the recommendation that's being made here today? Absolutely. Mr. Goldson. Hello, Mr. Mayor. Hi. Hi. Mr. Goldson, um, um, have you been listening to the discussion this afternoon? Yes, I have. Do you have any objection to what was being recommended here with regard to allowing the HOA to weigh in on this and to bring this up in two weeks? Well, I, I maybe do, I believe Dr. Pittman is probably on the line as well, but we've been um, in discussions with her uh, in the community since our last meeting. And I know we actually started off in the beginning, but COVID threw some things off. From my understanding after polling, and we have the notes from the community that she pulled, each one of the members that were for or against or just with no opinion of the of the project did leave comments. The comments that they left were traffic related. Our discussion with the community, we were looking for any way that this restaurant could make sure that we move traffic faster. One of the things that we came up with was using technology to make sure we had someone in the line taking orders before they actually got to the, the digital check board, almost like uh, what you see with Chick-fil-A. We proposed some other things, but ultimately after Dr. Pittman met with the uh, city, the DRC, some of the things that came out, like Mr. Woods mentioned, were the speed bumps in that particular arm. From my understanding, uh, that would, that uh, is sufficient at this point. Uh, I, I do understand I'm committed to making sure this works. I've actually uh, talked to DRC and told them that I would be willing to contribute to the production and maintenance of these particular speed bumps. So I, I'm not opposed to waiting, but I think that Dr. Pittman might want to chime in because she has spoken to every one of her members and gotten the comments and the vote from them. I, we can bring her on in just a moment, but I, my concern is Dr. Pittman doesn't want to speak for the group when the group really had met and to have any kind of discussion and exchange of ideas. She had one-on-one -on -one conversations, but I can imagine she doesn't feel comfortable speaking for the group unless they've had their meeting. Uh, Dr. Pittman, are you on the line? 
Good afternoon. Yes, I'm on the line. Um, did I accurate, re accurately ref reflect your feelings? Um, overall, yes, that's correct. Um, we did do the polling with the individual um, members, and I couldn't get in touch with all of them, so I didn't even reach um, everyone, but we got a large number. But yes, um, I do agree. Um, we should sit at our meeting, and along with having um, the young lady's name that I was given is um, Carrie Mac McNeil from TAM. Um, she's going to be on our call, and she's going to be able to um, help us understand um, the options that we are suggesting to see if they will also um, help um, handle the traffic that we are expecting with the project. Um, so, again, it is a project that we support. Our concern is management of the traffic flow. So when we talk about traffic flow, we're talking about congestion versus speed? It's a combination because what, um, what we are envisioning is going to happen. Um, that the, the restaurant, the project is going to be on the corner of Northwest 20th Avenue and Sixth Trunk Boulevard. At that particular um, intersection, well, you can't even really call it an intersection, but at that stop sign, there is um, only provision for a right turn going east. So what we see happening as the patrons come out of the restaurant and they realize that they may have difficulty getting back onto Sixth Trunk, they're gonna default and make a right back on the 20th Avenue coming back into the neighborhood. So when you say the speed humps, that was suggested because that particular street have um, a large number of young children on it that play on that street um, daily. So that was one of the suggestions, but the concern is if they can't get back on the sixth trunk easily, they're gonna default back on the 20th Avenue, hit fifth, go west and go on to 21st Avenue, which they will be able to um, wait a little bit, but get out a little more easier from 21st back on to Sixth Trunk to exit westbound out of the neighborhood. All right, will you promise us that at your next neighborhood meeting, you'll come back to us with a resolution? Of course, of course. I'm not trying to delay it any longer. Um, just trying to you know, validate and secure that um, we're not going to be, you know, inundated with all this traffic. And if there's a resolve, that's what we're searching for is the resolve. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Uh, Goldson, uh, let us, let us um, uh, continue this matter for our next meeting, if you don't mind, which will be in two weeks. And we should have resolution by then, okay? Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, great. And so this Mayor, I if I may? Yes, ma'am. We do meet next Monday. So we should be able to definitely um, have a answer for everyone. So we're, we're scheduled for our next meeting on Monday. Excellent, thank you so much. Thank you all, thank you. Okay, so M2 will be continued until uh, our you, next commission. Do you wanna have a CRE meeting uh, on September 1st or do you want this to appear on the next scheduled CRE meeting which would be typically the 15th? Yeah, yeah. you can have an extra CRE meeting. Yeah, okay, sounds good. Okay, is that good with you, Commissioner McKenzie? That is good with me as long as Dr. Beasy has an uh, opportunity to share the information and get back because they're in support of the project. We all are. We all are, yeah. Um, okay, M3, motion to approve contract extension and increase in expenditures for construction contract audit services, yeah. Car Riggs and Ingram LLC. Any questions with regard to this? There being none, could I have a motion to approve? Yeah, Mayor, I do have one question about that item. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Um, when I was reading it, we're talking about extending the audit to the um, dive tower in the north deck. Um, John, just, just so you all are aware, aware too, John, can you explain to us what will happen um, when we do move forward with the comprehensive agreement about the locker towers? Will we also extend this audit to Certainly the commissioner. locker room? Absolutely. So this is covering the existing contract that's already in place with Hensel Phelps to complete the work that's under agreement at this time. When we come back with a separate agreement to cover the South building, we will also be bringing back another item for the contract with Cars Riggs 
that will cover that portion of the construction project. So there's a different set of, um, of funding sources for that. And we will, uh, again, like I said, we will bring back another change order at that time to capture that portion of the work. Okay, so we'll see that, John. Um, so, I mean, tonight we're gonna vote on that interim agreement for the locker rooms. And then once we have that comprehensive agreement, we'll see the audit extend to cover their work. That's correct. All right, okay, just so y'all are aware of that too. Thank you. It. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions with regard to M3? I move the item. Okay, thank you. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, please call the roll. Commissioner Moritis? Yes. Vice Chair yes. Glassman? Yes. Commissioner McKenzie? Yes. Commissioner Sorensen? Yes. Chair Trentels? Yes, and the item is approved. Any other business of the CRA? Mayor, uh, Mayor. I, I do have a question, Mayor. Yes, yes, Vice Mayor. Thank you. Um, a question for Clarence. How are we doing on the timeline for processing the applications for the business assistance program in the CRAs? I know a lot of people are just really needing that assistance. We had a tremendous turnout, of, I think about 103 applications for that program yes. that we approved in July. Can you tell me how quickly we're going through that and how quickly we can get funds to the folks that need it so badly? So as you indicated, we have 103 uh, approved, uh, preliminarily approved applications and uh, uh, we're requesting all of the documentation um, that uh, will ultimately determine whether or not they are actually eligible like uh, tax, tax returns and uh, bank statements and those type of things. All of that is in the process right now. We're in the process of doing that right now. Um, we anticipate uh, if we get the uh, documentation from them and we're giving them seven days, if we get that documentation from them timely, then by the end of this month, we can uh, be turning around uh, checks. So, well, what if they already have gotten you all of that documentation and everyone's applications are complete still the end we, of the month? We won't wait. No, no, we won't wait. <laughs> we won't wait. Once they complete, uh, uh, the end of the month is just a uh, outside date uh, for, you know, how we plan to try to push and get this, uh, get these uh, dollars into the hands of uh, those that need it. So we're giving, we're giving seven days and then time to be able to process them. Uh, and we, we hope that the end of the month is like the latest, but if folks can get us their documentation and we can verify all of uh, the, uh, all of the documentation that, that that's given to us, then we'll, we'll cut checks sooner than that. Any idea how many and, out of the hundred, any idea out of how many of the 103 did not give you all of the documentation in the original application? Well, no, we're, we're requesting the original application. I mean, the original, the, uh, the, the documentation now. Um, the original application was basically a screening type application to determine whether or not they would be eligible uh, to be in the program based on the uh, initial uh, criteria. Okay, once, and Adam, we, how, uh -huh. how, many out of the, how many out of the 103 met the criteria for the uh, application? Yes, ma'am. So, 103. <laughs> we, we, we received well over 200 and maybe 20, 230 applications. There were about 110 that did not qualify. So the 103 oh, okay. were the, uh, yeah, yeah. Those are the initial uh, approved, if you will, uh, to go to the next round to receive all of the, well, to ask for all of the uh, additional documentation to verify their eligibility. Okay, thank you. I, I and, was and, not and aware of the fact while that we're I on this, Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Alan, do you want to say something? On M2, uh, we technically need to actually defer that to mid July. Or we need to defer that to a date certain. I, I did. Well, you didn't vote on it. You have to. We have to vote on it. Okay. Um, on M2, can I have a motion to defer to September 1st, 2020? Go move. 
Second. We move the seconded. And just for the record, there was a um, revision to the memo uh, on, on page one. I just wanted to point that out for the record. So the revision of what? The revision to the memo on M2 before we vote on it. The revision was sent out earlier. Yeah, today, and I right? sent You're it out. I sent it out. To it. I'm just making sure I can have that on the record. Um, Commissioner Moritis? Yes. This is to defer to yes. September 1st. Vice Chair Glassman? Yes. Commissioner McKenzie? Yes. Commissioner Sorensen? Yes. Chair Trentellis? Yes. And the item is deferred to September 1st, 2020. Any further business of the CRA? There being none, the meeting is adjourned. We now return to our conference meeting and we go to CF1. Have we located John Hurst? His name back on the screen. Yes, Mayor, thank you. I apologize, but I had uh, unfortunately gotten kicked out of the uh, program and I have found my way back. So we will right, take so a, we'll take a walk through uh, the audit that, uh, that we performed. And this is IT general controls. It's a security baseline review. And what we do is we use certain uh, guidelines that are promulgated by um, IT audit uh, organizations. And we looked at our IT department to see where they stood with regard to best practices and, uh, and recommendations. And we found a number of areas where we think there are some concerns and opportunities for improvement. Now, I am not going to share in a public forum uh, what those are. Obviously, these are security controls that impact the effective functioning of our IT system, and it would be not be prudent to openly display those in a public forum. They're exempt and confidential from disclosure. So what we've given you here is a high level overview. But I'm pleased to say that working with our new IT director, uh, Andrew, we are moving forward together. He and uh, Maria Pagny from my team are in alignment on these issues. They've provided us with an action plan for how they're planning on addressing. And they've already started uh, making movements along those lines. So I'm, I'm happy to say that we are moving in the right direction, even though everything was not what it should have been when we first began our review. Thank you, Andrew. John, how are we to proceed on this item then if everything is... Uh... Right, so, you know, I, I guess I'll just provide a brief management response and, and that's not really to say a whole lot more than what uh, Mr. Herbst just pre presented because um, he is correct that this would be something that we wouldn't want to uh, talk about. It would. Uh, many specifics, but I'm glad he ended where he did, saying that uh, we already have an action plan in place, and uh, led by Andrew and, and his team in consultation with the auditor's office. And uh, be happy to talk individually with any of the commissioners in more detail. But uh, I just want us both to be speaking from the same voice, saying that uh, this did identify some areas that uh, we didn't have the gaps closed. And uh, um, uh, again, as Commissioner McKenzie said, thank you, Andrew, for. Uh, your leadership role in, in taking this department and putting it in a very new place. So thank you. Chris, do we have a timeline for the remediation for the all those new plans? Let me let Andrew uh, talk very high level about what he's put together and, and what, uh, what our response is. Thank you. Andrew. So as the IT director, we can't hear. <laughs> Well, not that's the good, first plan. Not good, that's not a good start. <laughs> well, I'll have to delay that timeline. That's for yourself. Well, this is not going off as planned. So, Andrew, are you going to be able to join us, or do you? Uh, it shows as though you're off mute, but we can't hear a thing that you're saying. Well, we know what one thing has to be worked on. <laughs> Let me say this, Andrew, if you could hear us, thanks for all the new devices you've given us because they've really been a, a lot more helpful and, and efficient. Sorry you don't have the same experience. So 
Well, we allow him an opportunity to figure out how to uh, come on and talk. Are you okay if I move into some manager reports? Go ahead. We've got, uh, Wait a minute. There was one person who asked to speak, Mary yeah. Jackson. Yeah. Mary, are you there? You're Mary Jackson on the line? There's not. Okay. We shall move on. Wait, well, there, there he is. There's Andrew. There's Andrew. Uh, I I sincerely apologize. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners, and uh, Andrew Parker, Information Technology Services Director. I apologize for that. Um, yeah. I do concur with the City Auditor and the City Manager's response. Um, I will not take total credit. Uh, both departments, IT and Finance, uh, did participate with the city auditor's office during this audit process, and we do uh, support the findings. Uh, we've taken actions since then to remediate several of the findings. However, to the commissioner's question, other findings do require a more robust security program to address the implementation and the ongoing maintenance of the required policies, procedures, and security controls. Uh, so to that extent, uh, and as part of the, the plan that we've ta I've talked to the city manager uh, regarding how we move forward with security, uh, I've created for the first time in the department an IT security division. Uh, and on March 23rd, I've also hired an interim IT security division manager to lead that division and address the citywide cybersecurity activities and lead the development of a more robust uh, cybersecurity program. If we do have an opportunity to have a one-on-one, -on -one, I, I can go in a little bit more details as to what that uh, more robust cybersecurity program entails. But to that extent, uh, I, along with the, security, the new security division, will continue working and collaborating with John and Maria and, and his team uh, to move the citywide cybersecurity initiatives forward. Uh, we do not have a timeline, in, in all honesty, it will require some funding. Uh, a lot of these policies and procedures are, are checklists of things that needs to be done on a daily basis to monitor logs, to, to look at the, the uh, cyber hacker activities, which are fast and furious and are always changing. So you need tools as well as resources to continually monitor and, and check for activities uh, in a proactive way. So we are going to be working on that plan uh, in conjunction with John's help, and we'll have a program recommendation to put forward uh, in the near future. All right, thank you. Anyone have any questions of Andrew? Well, that's, that's good. Thank you, Andrew uh, and John, you guys for um, trying to get ahead of this. I uh, look forward to um, where we land with this. Thank, Thank you. you. We'll, we'll certainly keep you abreast of, uh, of the issues as they continue to evolve. Okay. Thank you, John. Thank you. So now we'll move on to city manager reports. Mr. City Manager, do you have any reports? I today? do. I've got a list that hope, hopefully won't take uh, too terribly long, but I want to touch on a couple of topics, uh, Mr. Mayor, and maybe have a couple of our staff weigh in. Um, Commissioner Baritis asked early on if I might give an update as to where we are with COVID CARES funds. and. Uh, pursuing those, receiving those, making application for those. And I'm going to see if I can put her on the spot and ask Susan Grant to come uh, live to the meeting. She's the repository for all things COVID funding, and uh, she can give you some sense as to uh, what's already in the door, what we've asked for, and who we've asked for it from. So, Susan. Susan has the IT speaker. Uh, can't hear you, Susan. Nope. Move on to another item. I'll move on to another topic while she figures out how to uh, navigate, navigate that. System. So let's, uh, um, we've got a couple of topics I just want to throw out to the commission and see how you react that I've been asked to bring up with the commission in no uncertain order. So the first one is these Las Olas cones, the, you know, the cones that we put out on the weekends that have taken away Elena travel. Um, I've got, uh, letter from the Las Olas uh, Association saying, you know, nobody's really using it. It's really more, it looks like we're always under construction. 
Um, we'd rather you know, just, you know stop spending the money and, and taking the lane away. Um, and then I got a follow-up email that said, would it be the appropriate time to talk to the commission again as to whether or not we would explore some type of a weekend closure to turn it into a pedestrian mall? And I know before we um, had that discussion where we were just uh, landing on a lane. And so this is more just to throw it out to Commissioner Sorensen saying this request came back to me um, to say, hey, would this be the time that you might think about this again? Um, if you want to check with the neighborhood, check with the businesses. If you want me to do it, if you already know what they might say, I'm just interested in whatever reaction or feedback you might have. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Um, so I've been communicating with the neighbors about um, not wanting the cones anymore. That's the first I've heard about wanting a, a lane, the, the kind of full closure. So um, I think that, that would just need to be more uh, further discussion. Okay, so maybe we can have that in the next week or so, and uh, we'll we'll figure out if that's something that uh, you want us to pivot to. We certainly can. Um, I think it'd be worth experimenting. Just want to do it Dan, don't you think it might be worth experimenting to close the street down between the tunnel and say, uh, you know, just like two or three blocks, just to create like a pedestrian open space. Um, I know people like the idea of walking around and I know the weather has been um, inconsistent, but even on sunny, hot days, it's kind of nice to be able to walk around. You think it might be worth to take one weekend and see how that works? Yeah. I mean, that the challenge is um, some of the folks that live nearby, just transit and so forth um, can be difficult, but yeah, it's, it's look, it's worth, worth talking about and seeing if there could be uh, we could, we could experiment. All right, maybe we should do that, not necessarily this weekend, maybe maybe Labor Day weekend, you know, um, might be a good time to do it, you know, um, and, and now that we're now that we're talking about Labor Day, <laughs> um, what do you folks want to do with regard to the beach on Labor Day? Leave it open. Want to left open? Yeah. What happens if Miami, what happens if Miami closes theirs? I think we should just monitor it. I'm going to tell you, I, I think that every single holiday, I don't know, I, I don't think we should be so shy. I think we have to monitor it. We have to be ready to enforce it. If we can enforce and cite uh, restaurants and give them fines like we've been doing, then we should be able to do some crowd control. I just, you know, I, I keep hearing these horror stories from all of our businesses on the beach. The hotels are suffering. We killed them on July 4th. I don't think we can kill them again uh, for Labor Day. Uh, and now, you know, they're gonna have all these canceled reservations again. I just think it's a lot. I think we have to step it up. Does Chris think that we can handle uh, folks coming to the beach on Labor Day? Because I am not in favor of closing the beach on Labor Day. Anybody else want to chime in I on that? We can handle it one way or the other. Yeah, yeah I think Chris, Chris will always take on the challenge. Right. Uh, would anybody else have any thoughts? Ben, uh, uh, Heather? Yeah, I, I think if Chris Robert. feels comfortable, look, I, I think if Chris feels comfortable from an enforcement standpoint, um, I think if we continue to see positive direction in, in case numbers, uh, then I think it, it makes sense to keep it keep it open. Mayor, how do the other I, coastal cities feel? Well, we haven't, I haven't had that conversation yet. But I, I, before I had that conversation, I wanted to hear from our folks here amongst us, what our feelings were. I don't want to just go out and, you know, make agreements without talking to everybody. So, okay. Heather, any thoughts? Yeah, I think we should keep the beaches open. I, um, I, I really think we just need to hopefully, you know, wear our masks and do our social distancing, but we need to keep our beaches open. What do you think, Robert? I concur. Um, but, uh, but I think we still make sure that folks, you know, uh, wear the mask. Try to social distance, and if we um, get an influx where there's uh, too much that we can't handle, we can always stop the folks from coming over the bridge. Okay. You know, if it gets right. out of hand, we can stop the folks from coming over the bridge. Right. Once you get them over, that's gonna be hard. Say, hey, let's, let's, let's exit the beach. So I, I approach it with caution. With caution, I do think we need to be be um, cognizant of our of our um, business owners, our economy, you know, and and how we do it. Now, let's just take a look and see see what happens. But if, if Miami should close and, and, and Palm Beach should close, you know. Yeah, different conversation. 
to, to, to come down here to our I can, so I, but, but I, what, what we can't do is wait to the last minute and, and, and have hotel reservations be canceled that's well that's why that's why I'm bringing it up now and and I can almost guarantee that Miami is going to close I can guarantee you that Palm Beach I'll call the county mayor to see what he's doing but uh I can almost guarantee that uh, Mayor Jimenez is going to, I mean, he's got a bad situation there. Um, and, and Mayor Gelber is pulling his hair out of his head um, on a normal day. You know, uh, it's just, um, you know, they just, they find it difficult to be able to monitor and control crowd gathering um, uh, under those circumstances. You know, I went out Saturday night on our beach I uh, got there about 10, 1030. Um, most of the restaurants in, in, uh, were closing. Uh, took them about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to really wrap up. Uh, but they were pretty good. And most people walked across the street and sat on the wave wall. Well, funny, when they sat on the wave wall, they sat in groups of like two or three or four, mostly family members or friends. And they all distanced themselves about 10, 12 feet. I thought it was really remarkable. How, I don't know whether that was a coincidence or whether they really were conscious of, of the distancing between other folks on the beach. So, you know, it can be done. You know, people are responsible. The numbers are coming down, not only locally, but statewide. And so, uh, so all right, I'll talk to the other coastal mayors, and I'll also talk to uh, our mayor uh, of the county, Dale Holness, and I'll, I'll, I'll convey our, everyone's thoughts to them. All right. I'm sorry, also, Mayor, Mayor, yes, sir. I also want to be cognizant, cognizant of this. The beach is really a park, right? So when we right. do this, folks like to go to other parks too and gather on those days. So we can't say one park could be open and utilized in such a fashion and others cannot. So if we do it, we got to be consistent throughout our city in terms of when folks try to try to gather as long as they can social distance, you know, and try to follow CDC guidelines. So that's going to come up. So okay. um, get the horses try it. What I do, do not want to see us do is close the sand and then say close the hotels. The hotels can't be closed at the last moment. Right. And Mayor, I think when you talk to your colleagues and even at the county, when we do things like close the beach, we force people to have house parties on holidays and get together. Well, that's, and that's, that's the point. That's right, the point. exactly. That's was a spreader. Exactly. Right. So it defeats our purpose. Thank you. Well, so we'll be at your house for the house party. And I missed that pool party at the Sapphire, but that's okay. Next year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Chris, okay. Continue. Next time here, Vice Mayor, I want to come to you real quick and bring up the Waverly property. I know we've had a discussion about that uh, off and on over the over the break and. Uh, most recently, the commission um, they voted to not approve the purchase of the Waverly property. This is the one in Silbo Bend for those playing along without last names, uh, where the uh, where the midden is. And uh, you know, I think there may have been some different direction of the neighborhood. And I just wanted to um, ask you, amongst uh, you know, a meeting with friends here, um, has the you know has the opinion changed on that? And is there some desire that we look at that again? Yes, and, and Chris, thank you for that. Um, I did meet with the Selbo Bend Civic Association. Um, everyone's on the same page now. Um, there are no false expectations in terms of people thinking, oh, we're going to have a park here and tennis courts and playgrounds and all of that. They all know the limitations of the site because of the archaeological aspect of it. Um, so yes, th they're good with it. They're good with a passive site. They are very interested. So. Um, I am interested in moving forward and still trying to secure that site uh, for the city. It's a gorgeous piece of property, but now everyone's on the same page and they understand uh, the site. Um, there was some consternation thinking that the price was a little bit high, but now I'm hearing from staff that there are some comparables across the river. Um, I still think it would be great to maybe get somewhere in between those two um, appraisals that we had, the one at 2.2, the one at 2.6. I mean, 2.4 sounds like a good compromise to me. Um, but yes, uh, we're interested in moving forward with securing that um, with the Parks Bond money. Thank you. Have you spoken to the adjacent property owners on this? 
Yes, a lot. Are they concurrent too? Yeah, they were actually on the meeting um, with the Sailboat Bend Civic Association. Um, and uh, there was a general consensus that, yes, as long as everyone understands this is not going to be an active playground. Um, but yes, I believe that everyone is on the same page. Uh, as long as we follow the rules, save the banyan tree, protect the banyan tree, make sure it's secured. May, might have to do some elevated uh, walkways through the site there. Um, it's a great opportunity for an educational component about the Indian Midden and the Tequesta to Indians and the Seminole Indians after. Um, perhaps some passive, you know, just walking and you could maybe do some sort of kayak launch on the water, but everyone seems to be in agreement of what we can and cannot do on that site now. Okay, Very good. would there be parking there, Vice Mayor? Um, Chris, I think we've talked about at one point in time, maybe looking at closing some of that road and then joining with uh, William Lauderdale Park across the street for more of an active park site. Um, so maybe if you could talk to that in terms of the parking, if you think that's even a possibility, because that would free that area up as well. Um, but that makes sense too, then you could have a little bit more of an active site. Um, and the, the dish, I'm sorry, the neighborhood is also very interested in seeing if the county wants to release the bark site um, Chris, I don't know if you've had conversations with uh, the county at all about the bark site in Subopen, but those would be the solutions for the parking commissioner Sorensen if we were able to maybe combine this site with uh, William Lauderdale Park across the street. Okay, yep. so taking those in order, I think you're right. Um, we'd have to you know, hand that over to AECOM probably as, uh, as it would be designed and, and could be implemented, but I think you're right. I think we'd have to connect the two to get any meaningful parking there. I have not talked with the county about the bark site, but I, I will. Um, Thank you. Uh, one other uh, thing that was uh, asked that I bring up today um, amongst the commission is whether or not, and I'm gonna turn to the city attorney here in a second, whether or not we have any interest in a uh, volunteer type medical uh, officer uh, to be able to go to with questions. I know we've had uh, you know, a, that offer be made to us um, as to whether or not we would entertain a, a, a volunteer type person in that position. I ran it initially by the city attorney and I think that there was some concerns with needing a contract and professional insurance and some other stuff. And so I just don't want to leave a ball in the air without putting a period on it. Um, what would be the, what would be the uh, job description of this though? I don't have one at this point. So it, it would be one of those things that have to create. Um, and uh, we do have a medical director, so it would not fit in that role. We have somebody already that advises our, our fire department and serves as our medical director. So I'd have to work on, I'd have to work on a role and have to work on whatever the requirements that. Uh, that Who's our medical director? Comfortable doing it. Um, it's, uh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Um, Dr. Menendez. Doctor, yeah, uh, Benny Menendez, down at uh, Broward Health. <laughs> In their ER, in their ER Thanks. room. Yep. Um, so I throw that out there, and uh, you can think about it. Alan can wait if he wants. He can think about it. Maybe we'll come back with answers. But I wanted to uh, bring that because I was uh, asked to bring that up amongst uh, the group with reports. Um, two, two more things, uh, very, very quickly, and then we'll be right on time for our four o'clock closed door. So this is actually going to work. Um, let's go to Susan Grant. I think maybe now she's. Uh, back live and can talk about COVID cares. I hope so. Can you hear me? We can. Yes, we can. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, so far our staff is in the process of compiling as everything with COVID, um, it's evolving, um, but we will be bringing um, our FEMA ILA, the interlocal agreement, um, to the commission on September 1st. Um, we are estimating that so far we've spent about $4.4 .4 million on COVID response. And that's primarily our testing site, um, the food distribution, PPE for staff, sanitizing for city facilities and eligible overtime. Um, we've identified three funding sources for that. Um, and one would be FEMA. And again, we're bringing that um, ILA to you um, on September 1st. The second would be, and I'm sure a lot of you are following um, the county distribution of CARES dollars. So um, a group from the Broward League of Cities has been working with the county on coming up with formulas. And it's not just a 
uh, based on population. Um, there are different categories and each of those has a different um, criteria for how much funding that will be um, gotten on each of the different um, municipalities. And then finally, looking to the State Division of Emergency Management because we were partnering with them on that testing site. Um, as I said to Chris, we're still figuring out what's most appropriate in each of those three buckets. And our goal is to get 100% of all our costs reimbursed by one of those three sources. Do I have any questions on that? On that score, I just want to uh, let everybody know that I've been continuing to work with the governor's office to try to bring an antigen testing site to our city. Um, as, as you may know, the state has, uh, has installed two such testing sites in Miami-Dade County, and uh, they're now looking to have at least one, maybe two in Broward County. I believe that, um, that we may be getting one here at War Memorial. Chris has been working with the governor's office to discuss logistics. Um, and we may even get a visitor from the governor himself to, uh, to open up the site. So we'll keep you posted on all that, okay? Perfect. Um, if anything changes there, we'll let you know, but that was a good summary of that. The last thing I want to bring up today is, um, is uh, just in response to some of the items that I raised before the break uh, related to our police department and our response, uh, continued response um, post uh, May 31st. Um, and, and what happened over the summer break. Uh, hopefully you caught the commission memorandum that uh, was sent out in relation to the Bobcat report. And it, it included the Bobcat report as well as uh, several pages of uh, our uh, describing what we had implemented, what we had partially implemented, and what we had not implemented. So hopefully you were uh, in receipt of that. Um, the chief is just finishing a review of the after action report for May 31st. Um, I can tell you the city attorney has met with the Citizen Police Review Board. Uh, we've met with others who have wanted to come in and talk about uh, police reform. Uh, you should see the advertisement for a chief recruitment go out this week. Um, and we continue to talk with uh, various uh, groups as to whether or not we would benefit from an agency assessment in the form of, consult of, uh, of using a consultant. Um, and I had a, a very good uh, discussion on that topic uh, even this morning. Um, and I think we're moving in a good direction, at least from a business perspective, and then I would be interested uh, in, in how the commission might want to weigh in further on that. Uh, in furtherance of this discussion, and why I'm being very brief about it today, is the Citizen Police uh, Review Board has asked to meet jointly with the City Commission and would like to do that at your next scheduled meeting on September 1st. So I throw that out there as the question um, in this update, this brief, as to whether or not you would be willing to uh, have another meeting on 9-1 where we started at 11.30 like we did this morning with the budget, uh, uh, with, the, with the BAB, with the Budget Advisory Board, if you would uh, be willing to allow us to schedule that for 9-1, um, a joint meeting with the Citizen Police Review Board. Throw that out there as a question. I think Chris, is that with, Chris, is that with launch? We will have yeah. something to look for you. We'll have I just want, thank you, just wondering. Thank you. Yeah. I think, okay. Sounds I think good. we should. Okay. Great. Uh, but you may have to. You may have to. You may have to participate in the meeting from your office, though, Commissioner. Oh, okay. I'll come. Okay. It makes a big difference. <laughs> My lunch. All right. Well, is that it? Does anybody yeah. have any questions on anybody that? Anybody have any questions? Move on. We're great. Okay, anything okay. else? So we've got now got about six minutes. Um, is there anything that I didn't bring up that somebody was hoping I would bring up? Let me ask that real quick, just to throw that out yeah. there. And then we'll move Chris, on. can you give us a quick MPO status update? Yeah, so we're in discussions with the with the MPO and as well as Broward County. Um, there continues to be the concern raised that uh, our agreement with the MPO may create a, uh, a conflict of interest as it relates to surtax dollars. I can tell you today, as of right now, that there is absolutely nothing that we have either been awarded or suggested to be awarded that is at risk. So I don't want anybody to take that away, that uh, um, that, that we're at risk of a loss of any funding. Uh, ben, I see him, he went live on video. He's been working on this feverishly uh, all summer. And so I can uh, turn it over to Ben Rogers and uh, he can give you an update as to where we are. Yeah, Chris, just to add to that, um, I am scheduled to meet with the MPO tomorrow. We have some communications into the county. We're waiting on a response from them at this point. 
Um, and then we did provide the county with some information about the MPO involvement on the awards that uh, we've been uh, given so far, so that way they understand uh, if there are conflicts of interest. But my understanding is for the initial ones, we're looking at waivers for anything that might be questionable, um, and then we're looking to resolve long-term issues. So, so, so when you're sounding positive, Ben. Well, the thing is, uh, Commissioner Sorensen, that last phrase, long-term issues, um, I think we may have to re-examine our relationship with the MPO because we do not want to compromise our opportunities, but at risk any future funding that we might be eligible for because- uh, Right, the that's the whole issue. Exactly. Right. Uh, uh, so I, the city manager is going to come back to us after he has studied the issue and he may come back to us and ask us to uh, reverse our, our relationship. I think the MPO would be okay with that. Um, of course, we'll have to restructure our, our department, um, but but I think we're all I think we would all be in agreement that we do not want to uh, um, in any way put up a roadblock for any possible sales tax money that we should uh, right yeah yep. so thank you for bringing that up yeah but I, I, I would also like for us to wait until the verdict comes back that we are not in compliance before we just arbitrarily jump in. yeah I you I agree you're right. I agree. But, but, but what's more important to me is, um, it is my understanding that um, our anticipated dollars have deflated from MPO um, with the, uh, the penny tax. And I was informed of that in my briefing either yesterday or the day before. So, uh, which kind of makes sense if, if people aren't spending, but is there any way, Chris, Ben, that we can find out where our penny is and are we losing any um, any of our dollars from anticipated? Yeah, yeah I, can answer that, Commissioner. I, can answer, I can answer that, Commissioner. Last week, there was an oversight board meeting for the surtax committee on Thursday and Friday. Uh, and in that, the county uh, outlined their five-year plan and you are correct, the initial kind of recommendation for the MPO was a $300 million plan over the next five years. Uh, right now, that plan that the county outlined was $150 million over the next five years, um, part of the because of COVID and, and surtax income um, and mm -hmm. other just because of priorities of projects and the timing of different large projects. So uh, we're working on uh, understanding that a little more in depth, and then we'll be uh, drafting a commission memo for your uh, review and consideration. Okay. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, that's it. So uh, I think we've got a couple of commissioners, at least one that would be interested in a quick break. If we could take a quick we break. I've got to make the announcement make for the, the closed door and, we'll and then we'll have a break. Okay. All right. That concludes our conference meeting. Thank you, everybody. Uh, now we move into our executive closed door session. At this time, the city commission shall meet privately to conduct discussions between the city manager, the city attorney, and the city commission relative to pending litigation pursuant to section 286.011 parens 8 of the Florida statutes in connection with the following matter that city of Fort Lauderdale versus CFS Funeral Services Inc case number 18-62708 CIV RKA at present at the attorney client session will be myself vice mayor Steve Glassman commissioner Heather Moritis Commissioner Robert McKenzie, Commissioner Ben Sorensen, City Manager Chris Lagerbloom, City Attorney Alan Boileau, and outside attorney Edward Dion uh, from Neighbors, Giblin, and Nickerson, PA, and certified court reporter from Daughters Reporting, Inc. The estimated length of the attorney client session is approximately 30 minutes, and we'll take a five minute break before we enter into that session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. So, for the rest of the staff that we have on the call, uh, now would be the time to call off the call, and uh, we will be back shortly with a much smaller group. Thank you. Go ahead and make sure we're on mute in this room. The recording has stopped.